Hey everybody and welcome back to Investment Hunting where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I am not your financial advisor. I do not provide financial advice on the channel and I don't even encourage you to invest. But what I am going to do is share with you my own personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So we're looking at Norris um, Protocol. Uh, you can call it Norris, Norris, you know, one or the other. Um, you know, protocol, but either way, decentralized cybersecurity mesh for the digital world. So this is basically a cybersecurity enforcement protocol uh, that's employing a hyperstructure ethos. They say that it's unstoppable, permissionless, credibly neutral. Every device is going to become a cyber trusted, um, you know, validator node, you know, making safer, you know, network safer as they grow instead of making them weaker. Um, you can also see that in order to receive updates and early access, you can add an email address, you know, and this has also been verified or KYC verified, you know, as well, which I'll leave you the link, you know, to that certificate or NFT certificate uh, in the description below. So we also see a number of different links, you know, here in the navigation bar. It says beware of scams. The tokens are not being sold publicly yet. So we see problem, solution, technology team, white paper, FAQ, press, and blog. Some of those that we'll touch on, you know, as we go through the exploration of the project. I do want to let you know that I have not been able to find an audit on this project. Um, they're currently in the private sale stage, at least at the time that I scouted the project. Team is photodoxed, and um, I haven't been able to find any information regarding tokenomics. Or actually, you know, what I can tell you is that they haven't released any information regarding tokenomics. So I'm going to also leave you a link to a message in the Telegram in regards to that too. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's just kind of go through this. You know, so we see here revolutionary mass challenge. Um, you know, before we do that, let me go ahead and go over to the to the uh, um, to the presentation here. This might be a little a better place to start. So. All right, moving on. What is the protocol? So it's a decentralized cybersecurity mesh that protects devices, you know, on a planetary scale from cyber threats and attacks, as well as being a cybersecurity game changer. This protocol is also complementary. It doesn't conflict or compete with traditional centralized cyber tools, which is important. Uh, the protocol is built for Web2 networks like, you know, governments, enterprises, organizations, and the entire Web3 stack. All right, so what's it do? Convert centralized and untrusted devices into trusted validator nodes that identify risks in near real time, enabling secure operations under distributed consensus. By converting previously considered single points of failure into decentralized points of defense, uh, this protocol makes networks stronger as they grow, which I think is pretty, pretty important. Each uh, device constantly monitors every other device for good behavior and policy adherence enabling trust and integrity across any network. Um, so what is the token? It's the fuel for the transactions within this protocol enabled uh, machine to machine economy. Utility is baked in. Uh, the token incentivizes security and trust with devices being rewarded for maintaining secure operations. All devices are enforced to follow the highest standards. And as more devices join, demand for cyber trusted device validations will increase, making it valuable to own, participate, and support the protocol. All right, so let's see here. This is just highlighting that, again, it makes, you know, uh, network safer. So, and they highlight the problem here. 99% um, of the digital world is centralized, centrally owned and governed, siloed, single points of failure, more devices, more risk, weak audits, static approach for 40 years. Um, and there are many threats. The, ma the majority of cyber threats exploit the centralized approach. There's currently no real-time trusted enforcement of security standards across a global infrastructure. So, and they're talking about how much it's going to cost, you know, um, due to cyber crime uh, in the future. So let's see here. Um, and so here it's talking about how does it increase the trust, you know, which that's stuff that we've kind of already talked about already, but um, this goes into a bit more. A software agent is deployed onto a centralized device, enabling this, uh, the constant reporting of its cyber trust status. And, and that's, that's talking about that real time aspect that we're lacking currently. Network devices are converted into an army of cyber watchdogs governed by DPO SEC consensus. Devices previously considered single points of failure now become trusted validator nodes that can that constantly monitor other devices. So again, that's going back to that whole army, you know, of watchdogs. Swarm AI 
uh, provides intelligence, identifying, evaluating, and mitigating threats in real time. So, I mean, in terms of like the use case for this, I think it sounds really, really interesting. Again, you guys know that I'm all about, you know, innovation, first mover kind of stuff. So, hence why this project is being discussed on the channel, um, because I really do think that there isn't really anything else out there like it. But that's just, again, my own personal opinion. So, and it goes into just additional information in regard, and I'm, I'm not going to go through this whole presentation, but I do, I did want to kind of give you, again, as, as you know, on this channel, we, we introduce you to stuff, you know, give you a little bit of, you know, bite-sized, you know, information in regards to what's going on with it. And, you know, if it becomes of interest to you, you know, then we leave it to you to go ahead and delve into it a, a bit further. So, but, um, I mean, that's basically kind of what's going on, you know, with this particular project. So, I am going to scroll through and there. Um, I'm going to pause it real quick so I can get to the section I want to get to. So I wanted to go ahead and go over, you know, their timeline, you know, since inception. Um, so we're, we're going all the way back to like 2017. So there's been a lot of thought and intentionality, you know, um, and time invested, you know, into this, you know, so, um, and I'm not going to go over this, but I do want you to see, you know, just the timeline, you know, going back, you know, from 2017, you know, um, up through 2020. And obviously they're still, you know, working on it, you know, this project. Now I haven't seen an, an expansion of this, you know, beyond, you know, this timeline right here in terms of our road map, you know, but um, if the team does come across the video, it'd be nice, you know, if you guys um, could give me some information, you know, or point me in the direction of where an expanded roadmap is, you know, in terms of this particular project that I could share with the viewers on this channel. Um, so I'm going to pause it again, and we're going to go back to a couple other things, you know, on this particular presentation. And then I wanted to take you back to this, why we win. Um, centralized cybersecurity has an average breach detection and containment time of 287 days. Decentralized cybersecurity mesh, trust is reinforced with every new device in seconds, you know, under, um, you know, under their DPO SEC. Okay, so, and then we, we see here, um, device protection for Web3, account hijacking risks the, you know, uh, risks at the node user and exchange levels, API tampering risks, you know, the DDoS attacks, data corruption and tampering with oracles. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that goes on. Um, but this protocol it protects all network devices, you know, running on uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS, secures the cyber integrity of those devices so they communicate uh, securely and uh, safely. I mean, so it, they're, they're doing some things to try to, you know, really improve the safety of the space, right? So migrate your, your smart contract, you know, onto the protocol at the time of deployment. They're automatically performing an audit, making sure the contract is not plagiarized, copied, or, you know, anything that would make it vulnerable. Uh, smart contracts are, are backed by the Swarm AI system, ensuring secure communication and monitoring of all malicious activities. What we do not have right now, zero knowledge reports in audits, um, you know, audits regularly updated and shared. You know, so for me personally, I just see that there are, in my personal opinion, a lot of good um, things associated in, in terms of, you know, what they're trying to do, you know, with this project. Now, um, is it going to be successful in the long term? I mean, nobody knows. We don't know. Um, I think that there's always, you know, that, that, that window of wonderment, you know, as to anything that's new. How successful will it be? But in terms of the innovation and what they're trying to do, um, I think that it sounds, you know, very interesting, very compelling. And I think that if it works, it could be very good, you know, but again, we don't know that yet, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's my thoughts, you know, in regards to, you know, this, this, um, this particular protocol. Um, it says here, um, by 2024, organizations adopting a cybersecurity mesh architecture will reduce the financial impact of individual security incidents by 90%, which I think is a staggering statistic. Um, and then they say they're backed, you know, by very good investors, you know, Draper Associates, Holdgun, um, uh, Uniria VC, uh, the Holt Exchange, Expert Dojo, and the L uh, Level 1. And Corfo as well. So, so yeah, I think there are definitely some good things associated with the project, you know, but again, I am looking for, um, you know, the tokenomic information, you know, like they, you know, they have acknowledged that you know, there's really no information that's been released yet. Um, and uh, I, I would like to see, you know, um, 
some kind of roadmap beyond you know their timeline since inception you know so since i wasn't able to find that so um but with that said i don't have anything else to really add on this project other than i think it's an interesting um, piece of innovation you know if they can make this successful so um but yeah that's my thoughts and as always ladies and gentlemen you know, you guys have a lot of different options in terms of channels to engage with when it comes to um, engaging with crypto related content. So, you know, and I do appreciate the fact that for a small channel like this, when you take time out of your day to listen to me talk about a crypto. So um, I don't always get it right, you know, but um, if there's any aspect of this project that I have misinterpreted, you know, whether it's somebody from the team or even a viewer that's looking at it thinking, you know, um, they've got some of the thoughts. Um, you know, definitely leave me a comment, you know, like and subscribe. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. If you're getting any value out of the channel and you think somebody else might be able to get value out of it too, by all means, please to share the channel. I mean, that's the only way we're going to grow and I can't grow the channel without you. So, um, and we, def we definitely want to, uh, you know, grow our footprint, you know, on YouTube so that we can, you know, engage with more people on the platform. So again, thank you for watching. I'll leave the links relevant to the project in the description below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and you all enjoy the day.